Hey everyone, welcome to Motion Tutorials where we go over weekly topics in motion graphics, VFX, and 3D animation. I am your host, Sean Frangella, and today we have a very fun tutorial going over the second part of how to create this Call of Duty Black Ops 3 logo in After Effects from scratch and get this cool fiery animation look. So in the first half of this tutorial, we went over how to create the logo and create this logo animation to start out so if you didn't check that one out, be sure to check that out. That's the first part of this one. And where we left off is we took this logo, brought it into a new composition, and we're using a noise layer set to Luma Matte with that animation above it to get this kind of organic animation. And if you like learning about this stuff and you want to get access to project files, be sure to check out patreon.com slash Sean Frangella where you can help support the show, get access to project files, and all sorts of cool stuff. All right, so let's keep going with this and get some particles and really make this thing cool. So what we're going to do is similar to the last part is make another new composition. I'll do command N for new composition. I'll call this particles and I'm going to drag that logo container that I just made with that noise layer into here. And that's going to bring this in as one composition. And now I can go into my effects and go to trap code and get particular. And particular is a great plugin by Red Giant. If you go to their site and products, they have all sorts of cool stuff. This isn't an ad for them. I just use lots of their stuff. They make some fun plugins. So be sure to check that out if you want to follow along with this tutorial. And you can even get a free trial if you just wanted to try it out and follow along. So anyway, what I'm going to do is in my composition, make a new solid. I'll call this particular. It doesn't matter what it's called though. And I'll drag particular onto this. And this is going to give us our base emitter. So you can do a lot with particular. And I thought this would be a pretty interesting and fun way to use it. Cause it's not just snow or rain falling. What we can do is go to emitter and rather than a point, we can go to layer and that's how we're going to use this logo layer to drive particles. Now that we have it on layer, we can go to layer emitter and we're going to change the emitter. And one thing I always forget to do that you have to do before you change the layer emitter from none to that layer is make whatever your layer emitter is a 3d layer. If not, you'll get an error message. And then for this layer, I'm going to go to logo noise container and it doesn't look like much happened, but if I turn the particles way up, we can see we get a lot of particles, but they're just kind of all over the place and that's not what we want. So we need to tweak a lot of settings to get what we want. And now that we're just using this for particle emission, we can actually turn this layer off. So what we want to do is go to our layer emitter and for RGB usage, since this is a black and white image, we can use lightness and change it to something else like size, velocity to rotation. So we'll just do size. And right now they're all over the place. And that's because in particular, we get some default velocity and velocity from motion as well as the emitter size. So if I just zero all of these out, now you can see it's starting to line up with the logo. And if we just turn our particles way up, you can see that it's actually lining those particles up exactly on that logo. But this is just dots popping in and out of space. That's not what we want, but it's getting the settings there. And now we can just really tweak the settings a lot further to get them to where we want them to be. So what I'm going to do for that is open up particle. And this is where a lot of our work is going to be done. What we can do is just zoom in on a little part of this and going to focus on how they're looking and overlapping. And we want to make these a lot longer. We don't want them to just disappear. So I'll make them 20 seconds long. I tried a lot of settings with this to get kind of a more organic look. And I liked how it came with cloudlet as opposed to the sphere. And then I can just take the feathering up or down. And what I want to do is take the size down quite a bit randomize the size a bit, take the opacity down a bit, randomize the opacity and probably pull this down even further. And the way we can get those fiery colors is if I change the color to kind of a reddish orange, and this still doesn't look quite what we want with the fiery look because there's not enough and they're not overlapping. So what we can do to kind of get closer is we'll go back up add a lot more particles. So I'll do something like, 60,000 and then we're going to get a lot more and we can keep tweaking our particle look based on that. So to get that overlapping cool colors, what we can do is change the transfer mode to add 
and then you can see it's gonna blend them together and we can even randomize the color a bit so we get a little variety that's close to this orange so if we go way up it's just gonna be the full spectrum of color we don't want that we just have a little bit of color randomness and it's gonna keep it within that same kind of hue we keep it around 25 and I'll turn transfer mode add back on and now if we zoom out and play we can see it's getting close but we still got some problems what it's happening is there's no particles at the beginning and they're popping in and out of space and that's no good so to get particles at the beginning of the animation rather than emitting right at the beginning if we go to emitter and down here we can go to emission extras and there's pre-run and we'll just turn that all the way up and that's going to generate particles before the animation starts so now they'll already be there and now we can see that there's a little too many and they're overlapping a little too much so we can keep tweaking these settings. Let's go back down to the particle and we'll just make this particle a bit smaller and vary up the size a bit. And then if there's too many overlapping, we can just take this particle countdown, something like 40 and go back and forth with adjusting the particle size and the amount of particles. So let's randomize the size a bit so we get nice little variation on the size and scale of them. And if we play now we're getting a little closer and if we turn on motion blur in this composition as well as for all the layers in the other compositions that'll help blend that animation and it's starting to look kind of fiery like sparks we can kind of keep going back and forth filling it in as we want to and if we want to have them moving around a little bit what we can do is go back up to emitter put a little bit of velocity like 0.1 and a little bit of velocity for motion up to maybe like 15 and then we'll get a little variation now what we want to do is thin out that line so it's not so thick and fill in these little parts so we can do that by adding back in more particles we'll go really high we'll go to like 200,000 make sure I save my file and then just go back and take the size down and then we can thin that line out a little bit and maybe take the size randomness and just vary between the amount of particles and this size. And if it's getting a little too bright, we can take the opacity of this particle down quite a bit. So we go to like 15, then that's working a little better. It's blending together, but not showing up as just this dot. And if it feels a little too much like it's dots, that's where it really helps to randomize that size a lot more. So like I said, a lot of the work of getting this to really feel right is all within this particle setting and really just tweaking tons of settings here. And now if we scrub through a couple of frames, we can see that it's really working nicely. It's getting some nice animation, it's really popping. What we can do is on top of this whole particular layer, we can add a bit of a glow. So I'll just type in glow, and that's gonna really brighten it up. If we tweak these settings and just pull our glow threshold closer to 100, our glow radius up a bit, and then I'll just take my glow intensity down to pretty small, even like 0.1 and then just pull up my glow threshold back up and maybe even take my glow intensity even further like 0.05 we want this really little just a little bit of it you can see that that really helps to make it feel like it's fire and glow and we get some nice glow now in the original one there was a little bit of fire effects and flickering so if we gonna get really fancy we can even add in some of those but really blow up our render time so this is a pretty good solution to get there but if you really wanted to add in those little details we can do a similar idea with particular but instead of this little dot as the animation as the particle we can go into particle and use a custom sprite of a clip of fire and what I mean by that is I have this little clip of fire from digitaljuice.com and I can create this little small composition with that clip in here so what I have is a composition that's only 100 by 50 pixels and if I scrub through it's just this clip of fire on transparent so you can create a nice little fire clip just to use for what our particle looks like so back in my main composition if I pull that fire particle clip in here I'll hide that layer what I can do is duplicate my whole particular layer by doing command D and then I'll solo this one and what I want to do is turn down the particles quite a bit. So I'm only going to get like 500. 
and there's only going to be a few of these, but now instead of just those dots, if I go to my particle, I can change this to sprite, and that's going to light up this little texture twirl down. I can change the texture to that fire particle, and they're way too small to see, but what I can do is turn those up quite a bit, and now you can see it's particles that are being created just from that clip, but they all look the same, and that's no good, So, and they're all starting at the same time. So what we can do is tweak this a bit too. We'll change the time sampling from current time, which is just going to play them all starting at the same time, which is no good if you want it to look real and organic, to random loop. So it's going to randomly play and loop through all those. And then they all don't look the same. And now if we turn back on our other particular layer, we can see that we have a little bit of fire coming out of those. So it's kind of all over the place. What we can do is just take that size back down so they're not so big, so we get a little bit of that heat. And now we have these extra little clips of fire, and we could composite that accordingly by just taking the whole layer opacity down or up and tweaking the opacity of just the particles and that'll get us to our final animation so this was a really fun and thorough two-part series to put together on how to recreate this call of duty black ops 3 logo that i saw online that i really like so hopefully they don't get offended and don't want the video up so I think it's a really fun technique, a lot of cool stuff in After Effects, as well as using Trap Code Particular to do some pretty interesting stuff to animate this. It was something I saw that just came out a couple days ago, and I wanted to really see if I could get close to recreating it with some ideas I had. And I think this came pretty close. They maybe made it a whole different way. Who knows? But this was my technique to try to recreate the idea and get as close as I can. So I hope you learned a lot. And if you want access to these project files, don't forget you can get that by becoming a subscriber on Patreon at patreon.com slash SeanFrangella. And be sure to subscribe on YouTube and also add me on Twitter at SeanFrangella. If you have any questions on tutorials, talk that way. Thanks for watching. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash SeanFrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash SeanFrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at SeanFrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.